What's up guys? So in this video we're going to be learning about how to culture your own fruit flies at home which is going to be really beneficial to you if you keep any kind of animal that's going to eat fruit flies. They are really super easy to culture on your own and it's way cheaper to do so instead of just buying a fresh culture every time you need fruit flies. So without further ado let's get into it and learn something new. So to get started, basically we just need a few items and it's going to be really simple. You can get all these things online. Um, I like to get my stuff from Josh's Frogs. They have everything that you need uh, for a pretty good price, I think, on their website and it'll all come straight to your door, even if you need the live fruit flies as well. First things first, we're going to need insect cups and these come really cheap and uh, it's just going to be an individual little cup that comes with a, uh, let's see, the vented lid and it's got like little holes inside of it so that the fruit flies don't suffocate because you obviously don't want to put them in a container with zero ventilation. Um, it's just tough finding a material that they cannot get through that will also allow air to get through. So that's why you're going to need these insect cups. And then you're going to need something to fill the uh, empty space inside the culture with. And this is basically just going to serve as an area for your fruit fly pupae to form and grow out on, as well as a place for the flies to crawl around in. Uh, you just put the medium at the bottom of a cup and then nothing on the inside space. All the space would get wasted and your culture probably won't do too well because it's gonna have a lot more flies than uh, space in the culture for them. So basically what I use is Excelsior. You can get this at Josh's Frogs too. They actually have a fruit fly kit that you can buy uh, when you're first starting out. So um, I highly recommend you do so. It's got everything you need. And then uh, we're gonna need some actual producing fruit fly culture. So I got two here. I always keep two on deck. Um, that are producing so that I never run out of fruit flies. Uh, just depends on what kind of animals you have and how often they're gonna need flies. Um, and that's gonna help you decide how many cultures you should have on deck at one time. And you're just gonna need some medium. I got this Josh's Frogs uh, Hidey Eye formula. So there's two types of flightless fruit flies that you'll probably see online when you do your searching and there's uh, Drosophila melanogaster and Drosophila hydei. I like to use Drosophila hydei because they're a little bit larger and for my micro geckos that I feed them to uh, it's just a little bit more substantial of a prey item for them to take down. Now if you have something that's smaller than that and needs a little bit smaller food you can always go with the melanogaster. Um, there's, there's not really any difference except for the type of formula that you're going to need uh, for your medium in the bottom of the cup. And that's where they're going to get all of their food from and also where they're going to lay all of their eggs. And it's also going to serve as a place for the larvae to live before they come out, make their pupae, and then later emerge as an adult fly. So basically what I'm going to do is take one of my insect cups here like this. And I'm going to open up, this is actually a fresh bag of the Josh's Frogs Fruit Fly Media. I'm gonna crack this open. And it's just like a powdered mix of uh, everything that these fruit flies are gonna need in there. And there's like a directions on there to like measure out and, and like tells you exactly the size of stuff that you're gonna 
need to put in there, but I don't measure any of, of it out and I never seem to have any issues. So I'll just pour a good enough amount of this into the bottom of the cup. I don't know, maybe like a half an inch or an inch in there. Um, not, not too much, not too little. It's gonna expand a little bit when you make it, so that's about how much I'll put in there, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna seal this bag back up. Something that you may notice is that for some odd reason that I can't explain, if you smell this, it smells exactly like a uh, brown sugar and cinnamon Pop-Tart. And I don't know why, but that's, that's literally what it smells like. It smells so good. And now, just for the sake of the video, so I don't have to go up to the kitchen, I'm just gonna start my jet boil stove here and boil some water. Because we don't wanna mix just regular water into our culture because then it won't be sterile and you don't really want anything nasty getting into the culture like bad bacteria because it can mess with the whole ecosystem in there and you won't really get a very good producing culture out of it so i'll be back once this water is boiling all right so our uh, water is boiling so i'm gonna cut off the stove here and basically um, we're gonna just pour in enough of this water to make a thick, like, oatmeal type consistency, I would say. And you don't want it to be so runny that when you pour over your culture, all the medium is gonna come out of the bottom. So you can see that it's moist there, but it's not going to, like, fall or shift when I flip it over. Because that's how we're going to take our fruit flies and put them into the cage. We're gonna tap side of it onto our hand while it's inside uh, the terrarium or whatever enclosure you're going to put it into. Another reason is that they will drown in it if it's too soupy and uh, we don't want that either. We want our flies to survive in this. That is the whole point of what we're making. Pour in some water. And a good thing to remember is you can always add more water, but you can't take any water away. So. Um, I like to put a little bit in, see where I'm at consistency wise, and then uh, add more if I need it. So I'll just take a fork or whatever you have, mix it up with your hot water. We're looking like we're already at a pretty good consistency, but you don't want any dry spots at the bottom. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. Still need a little bit more. And it's nothing exact, so don't don't worry about making this into some crazy rocket science. It's simple and easy for a reason. So I want to show you the bottom here. You can see there's still some dried stuff on there, and we want to get every little bit of this media saturated. So we're gonna need a little more water. As you can see, this expanded quite a bit. Uh, now we're at about like a third, I would say, of the container full, which honestly like might be a little overkill. I probably didn't need that much of the media in there, but it's not gonna hurt nothing. As long as like you're not up to there with the stuff. Like I said, not rocket science. Just wanna eyeball it and make sure it's at a good consistency. And we can see right now it's hot and it's fresh, so it's, it moves a little bit, but that's about what we're going for, which is like, like I said, like a real thick oatmeal consistency. Now what I'm gonna do is open up my bag of Excelsior here and make sure that you have a vacuum because you can see this already is going everywhere. It's pretty messy stuff, but you're just gonna grab like a handful of this and just stick it in your cup. And that's gonna be all we really have to do for building building our fruit fly culture. So it's all like bird's nesty here. 
I want to just separate it a bit so it's not super dense. And then I like to fold over like the loose ends on the top so they're gonna stick up against the sides on the inside of the container cup here. And I'm gonna take this and stuff it down in there. And it's okay if it goes into the medium, medium a little bit, it's no big deal. And then we have our finished product here is just this empty fruit fly culture. And it's still boiling hot inside the medium, so we don't want to put our flies in just yet. So what I'm gonna do is put the lid on, and then I'm gonna take it over to my fridge, or if you want to do this ahead of time, you can just sit this out and let it cool down slower. Um, doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna take it into my fridge, let it cool down, and then I'll meet up back with y'all when I'm ready to add some fresh flies. Okay, so I have our culture out of the fridge. It's no longer hot. It has gotten down to room temperature, and that's what you're gonna want when you put in your flies. You don't wanna kill them with that boiling hot media. And then what I'm gonna do is take one of my active cultures. As you can see, there is a lot of flies in there. I'm gonna tap it on the table a bunch of times and keep doing that even after it's open so that I'm able to keep the flies from getting out. And as we know, they're flightless, so their wings are actually curled so that they're not able to fly. So you don't have to worry about them flying all over the place. What I'm gonna do is grab this container and when I'm pouring the flies in from this one, I'll keep tapping this one as well to keep them controlled. Hopefully we won't lose any, but it's not the end of the world if we do. Just gonna tap the top. Tap that one. Yeah, we definitely lost a couple. We're just gonna put like 100 or 200 flies in there. You don't need a crazy amount. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that was one of my messier jobs, putting flies in a container. But now we're sealed up and we're ready to go. So basically all I'm gonna do with this guy is let it sit in a room that is room temperature. I got one set up for my reptile so it's going to be like 75 degrees on average and that's perfect for these guys. And I'm going to stick them in side of a Tupperware um, or a Sterilite type bin and that's just gonna keep the humidity in the culture as best as I can. That way it doesn't dry out completely. If you have a really dry house and it's rather cold, then you may want to keep your culture in a Sterilite bin like that because it's not gonna dry out. If it dries out, they're not gonna be able to eat their food properly anymore and then you have the chance of the um, larvae dying when they're inside the media. So I hope that helped y'all out and you're able to now culture your own fruit flies and now you'll have them forever uh, for your reptiles that need them. And it's really great because now as long as you have that first culture that you bought from Josh's Frogs or wherever you got your fruit flies from, uh, you can keep making more flies and more flies out of that one original culture. And then the only thing that you need to get is the media and the supplies to keep making uh, enclosures for them. And then uh, if you wanted to really save money, I guess you could like get all this crap out after one of your cultures is done and then uh, reuse the cup as well. I've never done that just because they're so cheap already, but if you need to save a little extra money, I, I suppose you could do that as well. So I hope you all learned something today and uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and comment something down below. I'd really appreciate it. Peace.